Uh, well, day one of free agency, and we've already got some big news. The Atlanta Hawks just signed Danilo Gallinari. I waited a little while to start making this video. Shams hasn't tweeted in a half hour. Woj hasn't tweeted in a half hour. So I think it's probably safe to make this video, and we're going to talk about Gallo to the Hawks and what I think it means for this team. Before I get into it, though, I want to remind you to leave a like and subscribe. I appreciate all the support. And it helps you out because you get to see all my great basketball content. So, uh, subscribe. Without further ado, let's talk about the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, shoot. Well, the Lakers just signed Montres Harrell, so I guess I didn't wait long enough. But, <laughs> back to the Hawks. Uh, yeah, Danilo Gallinari. Question that comes into mind immediately is, do they think Gallo, Gallo can play the three because if they don't, this is a really crowded front court. Uh, I don't really view him as a three at this point because his lacking athleticism, that wasn't really good to begin with, but after countless injuries and, you know, he's in his 30s now, so age. Between those two factors, his athleticism has been depleted, so he's really not an athlete anymore. He still can score great on the offensive end because he's such a sharpshooter, and he's really good in the mid-range as well. But he is not much of a defensive player. He pretty much just gets by by being heady and smart on that end of the floor and making good decisions. So, is he going to be able to guard wings? I don't think so. And I just don't see a fit here with John Collins. So, with them drafting on Yeka Kungwu and signing Danilo Gallinari now, you've got four front court players that are probably... Well, you've invested quite a bit into them. John Collins, obviously, is going to be up for extension. They could potentially sign him for the max. I don't think that that would be a good move. I think he's worth slightly less than the max, but it's a possibility. You've got Gallinari, who you just gave $20-plus million annually to. Yeah, you've got Clint Capella, who you gave up a first-round pick for. And you have Okungwu, who you just took with the sixth pick. So this is a crowded front court. There's only two positions, and I think that, you know, you want to be giving all of these guys more than 48 minutes per game. So, I've got questions. Is John Collins going to be the next player to be on the move? I think that it's certainly a possibility, and I don't think that he would be lacking for suitors. I think he would be a really nice fit in Dallas, alongside Kristaps Porzingis in the front court. Um... That's the main team that really comes to mind. I'd have to do a little more thinking. I probably should have done this brainstorm before I came on here. What other teams would like to acquire John Collins? I could see the Cavaliers wanting to get in on that, try to cash in on one of their young guard. The area where this team is really lacking is in the, uh, at the wing position. So I, I don't really know that there's a wing that would be on the market that they could move Collins for, but... I mean, maybe this gets them into a run for Bradley Beal, and John Collins is a centerpiece for a Bradley Beal-type trade. I, I don't really know, but this Gallinari trade makes me question if Collins' future is in Atlanta or not. I don't think that the move will necessarily come immediately, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's on the move by the time the trade deadline rolls around. Outside of that... This is going to limit their spending a little bit. Gallinari is probably the biggest name that they're going to sign. I definitely don't love it because <laughs> it's not a position that they needed. And that we also just found out that Davis Bertan signed a five-year deal. So plenty is going on. I'm going to be probably having another late night similar to like I did on draft night. But back to Gallinari. I got to prevent myself from getting distracted. Uh... If he can play the three, then you're probably asking Tony Snell to take on a lot more of the difficult matchups night in and night out on the defensive end of the floor. And while Tony Snell is a good defensive player, I'm not really sure that that's something you really want if you are the uh, Hawks. In addition, Gallinari would take away minutes from some of their other young wings like Cam Reddish and DeAndre Hunter. And, oh, I think this is what I was talking about before I got distracted by Bertans. Signing Gallo limits their ability to add a good player at one of their positions of need, which would definitely be the two and the three. 
I was thinking that they could be a place where Contavious Caldwell Pope could end up going. I thought uh, DeAnthony Melton would have been a really nice target for them to pair with Trey Young in the backcourt. I thought that they would be in the running for Bogdanovich. And I also thought that this would be a potential Gordon Hayward team. I think Gordon Hayward is probably definitely out the window due to the Gallinari signing. signing. Uh, someone else like KCP or DeAnthony Melton could still come on alongside Gallinari as another big free agent move for the Hawks. But I think that any of those other guys would have been better fits for them. And if Gallinari ends up being the only real big name that they bring in, I don't know if it's the best move because they already had plenty of talent at power forward with John Collins. Gallinari's kind of a similar player to Collins. And yeah, I, I mean, the Hawks needed to add some talent. They needed to improve their roster. They needed to add a veteran who can make their team better. And Gallinari, Gallinari does that. I just question whether that money could have been better spent at the two or the three. I keep coming back to a John Collins trade. Uh, in terms of the actual basketball stuff, uh, Gallinari, if he's playing the three, this team is going to be really big. They're going to be able to create some mismatches in that way. Uh, I think Gallinari actually has a pretty solid back-to-the-basket type game where he can knock down some turnaround jumpers uh, in the post. And if he's got threes guarding him, sometimes you're going to have you know, a smaller guy that Gallinari is going to be able to take advantage of. I think that uh, Trey Young, Gallinari type of screen and roll game could be very interesting as well. Not screen and roll, more of like a pick and pop type stuff. But just the sheer gravity that Gallinari has as a shooter is going to help create a lot more space for Trey. And that's certainly interesting because Trey with space is, is pretty exciting to watch as he's got that great floater and he's a good playmaker as well. So um, outside of that, I mean... The defensive stuff is going to come into question. Trey Young is a poor defender. Kevin Herter is a poor defender. Reddish and Hunter have potential, but they're not quite there on the defensive end. John Collins isn't great, but he's creeping closer to the average mark, and obviously Capella and Okungwu are pretty solid rim protectors at the center position. But that's a lot of players on the perimeter that aren't great on defense for the Hawks. I mean, they weren't terrible this past season. They weren't on the same level as, like, the Cavaliers and the Wizards, but they also weren't great, and Gallinari isn't exactly going to shore up that weakness. But it is a big move for the Hawks. This is probably one of the bigger free agent signings they've had since, like, Paul Millsap and Joe Johnson. So it's an exciting moment for the Hawks. I think that it's probably a win you got this guy on a three-year deal. I think it's pretty likely that it's going to be a descending contract, so it's going to start off at maybe, I don't really know how this works. I'm not a cap expert, but it could start at like 24, drop to 21, and then drop to 18 in the third year. So you're taking the brunt of the cap hit in this upcoming season, and then in upcoming years, uh, you when you don't have as much cap space to burn, because the caps have the Hawks have so much cap space that... Adding a guy on a big contract right now isn't a big deal, but a few years down the road when they might want to have more space to add more veteran players to complement their young core, it'll be nice if his contract is cheaper. So I think that they should try to sign him on that descending type contract. We saw the Kings do that with Harrison Barnes. Uh, they also did it with Buddy Heald, I believe. He's on a descending contract. So it's a wise move for teams that have the cap space to fill and not much else to do with it. I think that we could see the Knicks do something similar to that if they end up signing Fred Van Vliet or Gordon Hayward. It's a good move to make. I could see the Hornets doing that with whatever center they end up signing. Probably Hassan Whiteside or Christian Wood would be the two that would make the most sense. Honestly, probably Christian Wood since the Pistons no longer have room for him. I don't really see another home for him besides Charlotte, and he would make a lot of sense there, so... That's probably going to be what ends up happening with Christian Wood. How did I get to Christian Wood? Oh, we were talking about descending contracts. So anyways, back to Gallo. Hopefully he is on that descending contract. Um, I think that he definitely adds a lot of talent to the roster, and that's something you have to look for. I don't love the fit, but now you have a starting lineup of either Trey Young, like... Kevin Herter, Danilo Gallinari, 
John Collins and Clint Capella, or I think they'd probably bring Gallo off the bench and not John Collins, start John Collins. So it would be like Trey Young, uh, Kevin Herter, Tony Snell, John Collins, and Clint Capella with a bench of Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, Onyeka, Kung Wu, and Danilo Gallinari. That team could make a run for the eight seed, eight seed in the East next year. So this makes them a better team, it makes them more competitive, it makes them a lot more exciting because Gallo, Gallo will probably be like their second or third best player right away. So overall, I think this is a good signing for the Hawks. There's more good than bad. They really just needed to focus on adding talent, and there's a very good chance that uh, Gallinari was the best player that they possibly could have gotten in this offseason. So overall, I give them a B for this signing. They're going to be exciting next year, and Trey Young wants to make the playoffs, and this definitely helps them get a step closer to that. Let me know in the comment section below what you think is going to happen here. Is a John Collins trade coming? In my view, it'll probably happen, I think, before the trade deadline. He's got that uh, uh, restricted free agency coming up, so I think they'll either move him by the deadline or trade him uh, in a signing trade next offseason because... With this Gallinari move, I just don't see the fit for both of them on the roster. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that's going to be it for me. I talked about everything I want to talk about. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you all again very soon.